Alright boys and girls, welcome back to the drive through for another Remix. This is a special atonement edition of of the drive through Atoning for the what is so far the worst video of the year. And we're just gonna go ahead and do this one over. But as always, the deli the drive through is sponsored by the deli. Hungry? Stop by the deli and make yourself a uh smoked ham and peppered turkey sandwich with two slices of American cheese on a honey bun with yellow mustard and uh, sweet gherkin pickle. That's pretty close. All right. Uh, this is 11.1. Welcome to 11.1. I hope everyone enjoyed Chapter 10. We're moving on into vector-valued functions, okay? We will refer to these as plane curves or space curves. And what we are doing here is kind of new. And can be a little frustrating, so I just encourage you to bear with it, okay? In two space, these are going to look like this. R of t is equal to um, f of t, some function of t in the i direction, plus some function of t, a different function, in the j direction, okay? So sometimes you will see those written like this just like vectors, we can skip the i's and j's and just write it in vector form like that, okay? Space curves are going to have three dimensions, and those dimensions will be defined by three different functions. So f of ti plus g of tj plus h of t. K. Okay? And we could also write that in vector function as, or vector form as f of t, g of t, h of t. Notice they're all a function of the same variable, but the functions are all dif different, okay, or can be different. And look, this is brand new notation. And so I know I said this on the original video, but I just urge you, do not get intimidated in math and science when you see new notation, okay? Uh, it's just like you do in the real world with people. You see a person, and they don't look like you or don't look like people that you're used to, and you immediately judge them, and you're scared of them, and you walk to the other side of the sidewalk. Stay on this side of the sidewalk, okay? You'll be able to get this. You just have to practice it. And that's basically what 11.1 is. It's just an introduction um, to this stuff. Okay, so we're going to look at a few examples. Some of these are a little different because um, I didn't want to feel like such a terrible uh, person and teacher, so I made some of these examples a little bit easier. So let's check out this first one. Okay, we've got T, we've got our I, our J, and our vector. Okay, so we'll just put in a 0. Uh, a 2, a 5, and a 10. Um, at i is 0, we get 0 for the i, negative 6 for the j, and our vector looks like that, okay? Um, a t equals 2, we get 2 for the i, right? Is it wrong? Oh, this should be a j, thank you. Thank you. That's big. All right. We're moving on. Two for the I. Let's see. Don't be confused. That's two T minus six quantity J. Okay? We're putting in we're putting in values for our T and getting out values for our I's and J's. So uh four minus six is a negative two. So we get a two comma negative two. Put in a five. You get a 5 and a 4. And then put in a 10, and you get a 10, comma, 14. Okay, and then we'll sketch these. Now, I'm actually, in this one, going to include the vectors, but this curve is not a graph of vectors. Okay, so I'll show you the curve in a second. So we're going to go 0, comma, well, I need a different color. 0, comma, negative 6. So there's our first point. 2, comma, negative 2. 
five comma four okay um, this one probably should have been a little longer if we're keeping things in scale and um, let's see that was five comma four and finally ten comma fourteen it's going to be somewhere way up there and I don't know if you realize it or not but these this is a line okay and I can show you that it's a line here in just a second here what I have not done yet is I have not sketched the plane curve the plane curve is the set of all of the points okay when you plug in for T so the plane curve in this one is a straight line Okay, and if I just let x equal t, okay, well then y would be 2x minus 6, and now you can see where that line 2x minus 6 came from. Okay? Alright, so let's let's do one that may be a little bit more complex anytime we want these things to go in circular or orbital paths we're going to involve sines and cosines okay so um, I'll make another little chart I've got T I've got I I've got J and I've got our vector let's go 0 pi over 6 pi over 4 pi over 3 pi over 2 and then let's just hit up the big ones after that so pi 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi okay go as fast as I can you guys can check me to see if I make mistakes sine of 0 is 1 cosine of 0 sorry sine of 0 is 0 cosine of 0 is 1 our vector will be 0 comma 1 um, sine of 30 degrees is a half. Yep. That makes this one radical 3 over 2. And you guys, that would be 1 half comma radical 3 over 2. I'm not going to graph the vector. Or I'm not going to write the vector out anymore. You guys get the idea. Okay, this is radical 2 over 2 and radical 2 over 2. And you would put those in that vector. Um, this will be switched. So radical 3 over 2 and 1 half. 90 sine of 90 is 1 cosine of 90 is 0 at pi you get sine of pi is 0 and cosine is negative 1 at 3 pi over 2 you get sine is negative 1 and cosine is 0 and at 2 pi you're back where we started okay so once again this is a plane curve and um, I guess we haven't stated, but this is our I and our J. And so we would start at 0, 1. And then we go to 1 half, comma, radical 3 over 2. Um, let's see, hold on. So notice that this is going to be on the unit circle, but it's going to be kind of going in a different direction than we're used to because we let sine represent our i and cosine represent our j and that's different than what we're used to doing so um, this one will be in the same spot and the next one will be here and then we go to here did I get that right so far yeah that gets us we've plotted uh, this point this point this point this point and this point Okay, good. We got five points on there. Well, now the next one is at at the time pi. Okay, has nothing to do with the, how many degrees it's rotated, but at the time pi, when we t put in pi for our t, our result is zero comma negative one. So we just skipped a bunch of time, and then at the time three pi over two, we go to there, and then we get back to there. So hopefully you can see that that now look, one of the biggest advantages to plane curves over just normal graphs is that they have orientation. So these points, as time 
increases in a positive manner. These points are traveling in that direction. And so you can probably see that this is going to have a whole lot of impact with orbits. Okay? All right, so now let's try to do a space curve. Anytime you see cosine and sine, expect things to rotate, okay, in a circular or orbital path. Um, this one you should know. You'll be asked to do this on your quiz and your test. This is half of a helix. You'll probably have to graph a helix on your test, and you might even need to um, come up. Um, this time, I'll just show you t and the vector, okay? So let's just pick some key points. Zero, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, two pi. Okay, so cosine of zero is one, sine is zero, and our t is zero. This one would be zero comma one comma pi over 2. Okay, this one would be, let's see, negative 1 comma 0 comma pi, 0 comma negative 1 comma 3 pi over 2, and back to where we started with a different z value. Okay, so let's take a look at what this looks like. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see that this is going to, we're going to need the unit circle on the bottom. Okay, hard to draw a unit circle in three dimensions, but there you go. And this is going to end up needing to be Ladashid. All right, so let's see if I if I tried to mock that. Oh no! Okay, so that's not our space curve at all. Okay, our space curve is going to be wrapping around that cylinder-looking thing. It's going to be starting at one comma zero comma zero is right here. Okay? Then we're going to be at 0 comma 1, but we're going to be up a little bit. We're going to be up pi over 2 in terms of z. That's a height. Okay? Then we're going to be at negative 1, 0 and higher. It's going to be up here. Uh-oh, I messed that one up. Let's see, that one was just too early. So I can put, that was this one. Let's put that one, like back where it would be, which is here, and a little lower, I guess. And then the final one we'll just place right here. And then watch what this is doing. It's rotating. And then rotating like that. Okay, so it's, just traveling up like a barbershop pole. And this red curve is our space curve. Okay? So it needs an orientation. And since we increased our T, our orientation looks like that. Okay? You can imagine that if we started one over here, and rotated it in the same fashion, we would get a double helix, which is what a DNA molecule is. So we'll get to that. All right, a couple more things. What if we wanted to take a typical graph, like a parabola, and write this thing as a vector value function? It's kind of backwards to what we did earlier. What would be the advantage? Well, this thing is just a set of points. What if we thought about it like an orbit, like some some space scraps 
that were rotating around this focus and getting shot out into space forever. Okay. Um, well, let's just let x equal t because this is America and we're allowed to do that. Okay. Well, if we let x equal t, then y now equals t squared plus 2. So we can write that as r of t is equal to t i plus t squared plus 2 j. Okay. And if you plot those points, which I'm not going to take the time to do, those points will perfectly fall on this and they will have this orientation. Okay? So um, that's a kind of a popular problem in this section. Now you might be asking yourself, so do we always just let e x equals t? That kind of seems like a waste of time. And Chris, hold on, wait. I just want to get some before you. Have a great day, buddy. Stay cool. I know you're not. All right. So this time letting x equal t would not help us. So what if since you should kind of notice, hey, that's an ellipse. It goes in a circle. So we're going to need to use, see everybody? We're going to need to use sines and cosines. So let's let uh, x equals, oh, this should be a 4. Let's, let's make that a 4 and a 9, just to make it clean. Let's let x equal 2 times the cosine of t. And let's let, let y, then, equal 3 times the sine of t. Well, why are we doing that? Well, I know that sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. Okay, so 2 times the cosine of t squared over 4, okay, plus 3 times the sine of t over 9 squared equals 1. That works. That's perfect. So all we got to do is let our r of t equal. See you later, Ted. Have a great day. 2 cosine of t, 3 sine of t, and that is how we would represent that ellipse as a vector valued function. Boom! See you Monday. Good luck.